Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hypop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we have a highly anticipated unboxing and review. This is the brand new Godox 8600 Pro Mark II. So I have with me the brand new Godox 8600 Pro Mark II flash unit. For those of you that don't know, this is a second version of their popular 8600 Pro flash. We've previously reviewed and unboxed that uh, particular flash, so if you want to take a closer look at that, click the link up above. Now this is the brand new version of that flash. This is the Mark II, and there are a few key differences to this unit here. There are a lot of similarities, but the differences will go through. So let's unbox this really quickly and see what's inside. Firstly, this is the retail packaging. You can see it says the 8600 Pro Mark II down the bottom here. We've gone to this new style packaging from Godox. This is a white carton with uh, some simplified logos and branding. On the other side, you've got the 8600 Pro as well without any reflector. You can see the bulb there. And just some of the top features that they have here, which some of these haven't changed at all. Firstly, it's a TTL flash. Uh, so that means it has through the lens metering. It also has, supports Godox's 2.4 gigahertz wireless system, and that includes all the X triggers, uh, the X1, X2, X3, the X Pro, and the X Pro Mark II. You also have 16 distinct group indicators, and you have 10 power steps from one over one to one over 5 12th uh, in, in terms of output. So that's a difference that we'll go through shortly. Now opening this flash up, first thing we see is a user guide. So it's a user guide there for the flash. Next thing here is the power adapter. This is still the same power adapter, it's the C26 power cable. We have the flash tube of course, and that flash tube is still the same. You've got the four prongs here, as well as the flash tube on the inside, and this glass protector here which is safe to touch, as long as it's not hot of course. And the battery here. So this is still the same battery from the previous model. This is the WB26. You can see it has the charge indicators at the top. And of course, everything, all that we've been waiting for, the 8600 Pro Mark II flash unit itself. So you can see 8600 Pro Mark II and some differences if you have a keen eye there, specifically the screen and also an LED indicator at the top here. So I have with me the 8600 Pro Mark II on this mini desk stand here. For those of you that don't know, this is the Spectrum 43 centimeter mini light stand. And what we can see is quite a lot of similarities with the 8600 Pro Mark II versus the previous model. For those of you that don't know, this is a flash that has been out in the market since 2018. So it's the better part of five or six years that the 8600 Pro has been on the market. So it's been a while since Godox have released an updated version of their popular flash. There hasn't been too much to change about that flash. That flash has still provided the same consistency, output, the ability to go through so many different full power shots with a full battery charge, all the accessories they've included. It has the Bowens mount. It really was one of Godox's flagship flashes. So you can see here with the design, there hasn't been too many changes. Now two key changes that I have noted uh, firstly, the screen here on the front. The screen here is a TFT screen now, and Godox did mention on the box there that there's 16 distinct color groups that you can see. And with the introduction of a color TFT screen, you can see color introduced to the group there. So on B group, you can see it's green. And if you were to change that and jump into wireless and change the group over, let's go into group A and jump back in, you can see A is red. So that's a sort of quality of life improvement, especially if you're relying on the screen to view uh, in on the field and you're actually able to tell the color of that particular group when you're controlling multiple flashes. On top of that, in top of the TFT screen, you've also got the introduction of this LED indicator, which shows this is ready to flash. Take this cover off. And you can see that flashes off now as well. The LED indicator just pretty much says that it's ready to go. You have this on both sides, you have that at the back here. And one last thing I actually noticed is the change and relocation of the power button. So previously the power button on the 8600 Pro was underneath, just underneath the battery pack here towards the back of the unit. Now they've just simply placed that on the bottom right button here, which acts as your test button, as well as a power on off button. So if you were to hold that, 
that turns the unit off. Now, all of these features are still present in the Godox 8600 Pro Mark II that includes high-speed sync, uh, through the lens metering, TTL, you still have the multi-strobescopic mode, you still have the color consistency with the 8600 Pro II model. You've also got that 600 watts of output, all the same accessories, so this is still a Bowens S mount, so that means you have access to all of the soft boxes from Godox and even other brands. You still have the WB26 battery as well as the C26 charger, so all of that is the same. Now, some people will be like, well, there hasn't been much difference to this you know, new Mark II version could be a good or bad thing, but in my eyes, I think it's a good thing because that means you have some crossover with the accessories. It means that all those previous accessories are not redundant anymore. You can still use them. So if you have an 8600 Pro and you're looking to upgrade to a two lighting kit or just increase your lighting setup, then at least you're able to you know, use those accessories, those batteries, those chargers with this particular unit here. On the front here, you can see it's still got that reflector. You've got that reflector cover, which is what it comes shipped with. That means it will secure the flash tube that's on the inside, especially when you are, you know, in transport or just packing this away. And of course, you've got that locking mechanism there for the Bowens mount, so you can twist that to unlock. You can see on the front there, there hasn't been too many changes in terms of the design. You've got the uh, silver heat sink here, as well as the flash tube that simply just removes like that. Now, one big change they have made to the 8600 Pro Mark II is the modeling lamp. Now, as you know, some modeling lamps have now been shifted over to LED, and you can see that's no different with the Mark II here. The previous version also had an LED modeling lamp, which I believe was only eight watts. What they've done here is they've increased the output of the modeling lamp to 40 watts, still maintaining the same power and not really reducing the battery life of the flash whatsoever. So this is a 40 watt COB LED light, and it's also bicolor which is great too. So that means you can change it from the warmer color temperatures, about the 2600 Kelvin, all the way up to the cooler color temperatures, such as 6500 Kelvin. So that's really great because a lot of the time you need some sort of continuous lighting source, whether that's because you're in a low light situation and you need to pull focus, or you just need to kind of see where the light will fall on the subject before you actually go to take the shot, because with a flash, you can't do that. So introducing a stronger LED modeling lamp is a great addition to the particular flash here without you know, interrupting any of the power that's coming from the battery, the WB26, or reducing its battery life when it's in use on the field. Now we can go ahead and test to see that output there for 40 watts because that is impressive. So Godox do sell LED lights at about that output range. So you've got like the ML30, as an example, you've obviously got the popular SL60, which is 60 watts, so a bit stronger. So it sits around in between those two lights there, the ML30 and perhaps the, the SL60 or ML60. So the fact that you have that all in one unit is actually a great addition and a great feature to the Mark II. Now, lastly, you've also, since the previous model, the 8600 Pro has been introduced, you've got the introduction of the new Godox X3 trigger, which is the touchscreen OLED uh, mini or nano type trigger. For those of you that are familiar, uh, we've unboxed and reviewed that, so you can take a closer look at the link up above. Now, the great thing about that particular trigger is you actually have one touch wireless sync to the Godox 8600 Pro, which means that you're able to just simply pair them up really uh, with a one touch, and it's actually demonstrated, which I'll show on screen now. So that is a quality of life improvement, as you can see, because previously you're dialing in the channel, the group, and even perhaps the ID, depending if you're using that feature. And with the Godox X3, it's just a simple one touch. And it's brilliant that they've able, been able to improve that sort of thing. And hopefully if any improvements or any new models of triggers get released in the future, a lot of their flashes as well as triggers get updated with this one touch sync feature. 
So to test the 40 watt modeling lamp, what I've done is I've set up the 8600 Pro, which you can probably see at the top of your screen there. It's about one meter away from me. And I have the Sekonic C800 light meter here. So we can test out the Lux rating as well as the CRI of this light. Currently got a key light on here for this video. So I'll turn this one off and be using the Godox light here at full output to get the readings here from the meter. So first reading here is a CCT of approximately 6,308 Kelvin. And you have a lux reading of 4,500 lux at approximately one meter. Now with the reflector on, approximately 6,364 at the CCT, so 6,364 Kelvin, and 10,500 lux at one meter. Now I've changed this to a 2,800 Kelvin light here, so a warmer color temp, and we'll measure that now. With the reflector on, we have a CCT rating of 2,912 Kelvin, and a lux reading of 9,600 lux with the reflector, approximately one meter away. Now, one last check I wanted to do is a CRI rating, and I'm coming up with 96.5 CRI at that white color temp of about 6,000 Kelvin. So now we're just quickly gonna go through how to operate the 8600 Pro Mark II. Firstly, with the new on off position here for the button, simply hold down the bottom right button and that turns it on. And the first thing you see is just an unlock on the scroll wheel here. That's a safety feature, obviously, if it gets bumped while it's in your bag or during transport, then you don't want it to waste your battery. And then you go to the job and find out that there's no more battery left, which is something you don't want to happen. So let's do that. And firstly, it shows us the screen. The modeling light's turned on right now, but we'll turn that off really quickly and just hold down that modeling light button. And that uh, helps you control that modeling lamp, that 40 watt bicolor LED. And you can see here you have the mode button at the top right and the mode button allows you to cycle through to different modes. So this is multi-mode, that's TTL, big letters there. And you've also got manual mode. Now, another advantage of the 8600 Pro Mark II is it has one of the fastest flash durations on a flash, which means you can really uh, capture motion and you know freeze frame that motion um, given that T value. So if we were to decrease the output there, you can see the T value currently is one over 11,760. And that's its T.1 value. And as we increase the output, the T value is presented there at the bottom left of the screen. So at full output, it's T value, T.1 value is one over 220. Now jumping into the menu, this menu has changed a little bit as well. The format, the color, everything has sort of changed and it's good to see all this color introduced to it. A visual indicator for a lot of these menu options as well as the groups that I showed you previously. So all the way at the top here, you've got wireless and when you jump into wireless, you can choose to turn that on or off, off if you're using a sync cable as an example, or if you're using, um, yeah, sync cable, or if you have the AC26, which is the power pack and you just are in a studio environment, it's great to turn that off so you don't have any interference. Um, you also have channel here. So you have your typical channel range there. You can go from one to 32, so 32 channels in total. You have the group, there, so as shown previously, there was A and B, but you also, you can see the, the color of the LED changes. So that color indicator, as well as the color indicator on the screen, that's a cool feature. There you have, then you have ID. And ID, you've got one to 99, as shown there. And the reason you'd use ID is if you have multiple shooters, perhaps people using multiple triggers, Godox triggers, you don't want them interfering with each other and firing off uh, the wrong flash, so you would assign yourself an ID specifically for your gear so you do that on the trigger as well as the flash. Then here you have wireless sync. Now wireless sync is that one touch wireless sync as mentioned with the brand new Godox X3 trigger. So that's great um, feature to have. You can see press any key to cancel or please confirm wireless sync on the transmitter. So you can press that button, it'll sync up automatically. No need to fiddle around with groups or uh, channels. Jumping back in the menu, you go into flash mode and the flash mode has normal, you've got color, you've got freeze. So yeah, you've got a few different options here in terms of your flash mode. Photo cell, you have S1, S2. If you have slave, high speed sync, you can turn that on or off. Modeling lamp, you can have that as 
internal, you've got uh, continuous, and you you can see when you turn that on there, let's turn on the modeling lamp. Modeling lamp has three options. You've got off, you've got free control, so you can control this as from zero to 100% in 1% increments, or you can go uh, with CCT mode in 100K increments, so from 6,000 Kelvin down to 2,800 Kelvin there, or you can have this as proportional. You can change the CCT for your proportional uh, modeling lamp. So proportional just means that when you're changing the output of the flash, the LED also proportionally changes or decreases in value as you decrease in output for the flash. Now jumping back into beep, you can turn the beep on or off. You've also got A type, so you can change from decimal to uh, fractions there for your power output. You've got standby mode, so it goes into standby depending on the you know time duration that you set here. Auto off uh, if you want the flash to turn auto off after a certain interval. So you've got 30, 60, 90, 120. You've got brightness and the brightness of the screen. So this TFT screen here. I'd probably set that at something that you're happy with, perhaps a lower value there that obviously affects battery life if you have that at 100%. Then you've got delay here, so you can actually set a flash delay. Uh, so as you go to press the trigger, what sort of flash delay do you want? Do you want it in you know, 0.04 seconds to fire off or all the way up to 30 seconds there? Okay, and the next option here is mask, and that's used to mask your subject. And you can do so uh, with two masks, the options for two masks, three or four. And that's a whole topic for another video. There's plenty of videos online about that. So if you wanted to explore that further, you can do that masking using flash. It's really popular with product photography. And you got language here. So you can cycle from um, Chinese to English. Then you have reset, which just factory resets the unit and device info too. So it shows you the model as well as the version number there. Let's go through that reset. Let's go yes. And that's just reset everything. So when you go back, it sets it back to group A and you've also got channel 21 there back to the manual setting. So that was a quick run through on the way to operate the 8600 Pro Mark II. Now this flash here, obviously has been a staple in Godox's range since 2018. And now with the introduction of the Mark II, you still have that same reliability from the flash, the same consistency with the flash. It really is for photographers who demand the best from their gear. And the Godox 8600 Pro, as well as its entire AD range, has been proven, you know, tried and tested in the market for a while now. Um, so it's great to see they're updating these models. Now that they've introduced the Mark II for this particular flash here, I can expect to see the same from their previous models, specifically maybe the 8200 Pro, because that's been on the market for quite some time as well. And we'd, it'd be great to see an update on that particular flash or the array of different attachments the 8200 Pro has. Now, why would you get the 8600 Pro Mark II? Well, firstly, it would be a photographer who doesn't have a strong flash, such as a 600 watt outdoor strobe, like this. So if you've only got say a 200 and 400 and have been mulling over the 600 Pro and you need a bit more output, you need a flash that's going to overpower the sun, you know, really control your light source even in an outdoor environment and you're wanting to make that jump into that 600 watt, then perhaps the Mark II version is the one to go for. The great thing about this flash here is that the price hasn't changed. So it is still the same retail price here in Australia for 1,345 Australian dollars or 899 US dollars. So it's still the same price point, which is amazing because they've updated some of these features and really improved the light at the same price point. How about if you already have an 8600 Pro? Is it something that you should consider upgrading? Perhaps you're, you've been wanting a two light setup or you're wanting to expand your lighting range. Now you can do so with the Mark II. You can perhaps have two flashes going, two 600 Pros. And the great thing is that there's crossover here and all the accessories, the batteries, the chargers, the modifiers will still all work with this new Mark II model. And lastly, are uh, those people that don't have a flash whatsoever and they're wanting to you know, really get a first flash that will really be future-proofing them by having one strong flash and then perhaps going from there and 
and having some you know, lighter output flashes such as a 200 or 400 watt as their secondary flashes. 600 Pro Mark II would be a perfect starting point um, because you have all of that power. It's always better to have more light than not enough light. Um, it's easy to turn the light down, but when you're finding you don't have the, enough light, then you know, you're wishing that you had a stronger light to begin with. So maybe a 600 Pro Mark II is a great light to start off with when you're wanting to kick off your lighting setup. Now the ability to still use this outdoors with that battery pack, get 360 full power shots at full output um, and more if you're not using it at full output. And that's the great thing about this flash here is that it's so versatile, you can use it outdoors. You can buy the AC26 adapter, the power adapter, if you're wanting to use this in a studio environment and just use this all day, whether you've got a four hour shoot, eight hour shoot, um, this is gonna be one of your reliable workhorses in your flash setup. So that was our unboxing and review of the brand new Godox 8600 Pro Mark II. For more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comments section below your thoughts, or if you have any questions about the brand new 8600 Pro Mark II, follow us on socials, the links are down below, and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.